How's, how's motherhood been? Motherhood has been the biggest gift of life. I mean, you know that it's going to be something special and you know that it's going to be a love like no other, but this has been... It's uh, crazy, huh? It's I, like, well, I'm doing it again, so yeah, yeah. I must really like it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Set Apart Podcast. My name is Oscar. I'm the host of the show. And today we have a good friend of mine, somebody I've known my whole life. And maybe you've seen her. Uh, you probably see her on Channel 7 in the mornings. Of, uh, at least for me, I don't get to see you in the morning. I uh, I only get to see the little stories my that you Insta do. Insta updates. Yeah, Insta updates because you're, uh, <laughs> you're up a little earlier than I am sometimes. And if not, I have to go to a job site. Uh, but we're really happy to have you Thank on the you. show. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, first of all, congratulations on uh, baby number two. Thank uh, you. Yeah. How's that? Uh, how's the whole thing uh, been? Good, good. We're super excited. My husband and I, we have our first daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, she's 15 months now. And then uh, they'll be 22 months apart. Wow. Yeah, we're excited. We wanted them close in age. So yeah. we're, we're, we're trying to uh, pull the trigger. Yeah. yeah. It's like, a, it's a little scary. It is a little scary. We're nervous, but. How's, I mean, how's motherhood been? Motherhood has been the biggest gift of life. Yeah. I mean, you know that it's going to be something special and you know that it's going to be a love like no other. But this has been it's uh, crazy, huh? It's I, like, well, I'm doing it again, so yeah, yeah. I must really like it. Yeah. <laughs> and how has Gabe been, your husband, through this whole process of, uh, you know, obviously not pregnant, but just your relationship with him? Oh, my gosh. That's a that's a, a very complex uh, question because I can go on and on about him. He's my rock. He's my he's my everything. I mean, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a great guy. He is. He is. A crazy story. I mean, I don't know if you want to go from start from here, but we've known each other. He's had a crush on me for a really long time uh -huh. and I didn't pay attention to him yeah. until the other day. <laughs> and then that's when we started dating for real. Well, <laughs> yeah. He sent you a message. <laughs> oh, well, the truth is he was my sister's camp counselor. Oh, wow. Back in like when he was in high school, uh -huh. when we were in high school, both of us. Um, and nothing. I didn't know he. Yeah. I didn't know him. He was quiet. He was quiet. He seems like a quiet guy. He was. Yeah, he's a little quiet, but he's actually he's not quiet because he's in sales and he can talk. Yeah. And he'll talk to everybody and anyone. Um, but yeah, yeah, we were we were meant to be together. Well, you guys look like you have a great, uh, re great relationship. Thank you, thank you. The smiles are ear to ear when you guys are are we're together. We 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 do love each other. We're excited for what's to come. What's something that you didn't expect being a mom? that you're like, wow. Um, well, I think going back to work was way harder than I thought. No one warned me about that. Mm. Um, no one warned me about that. And um, that has been, that was an adjustment. I guess it's gotten better now. It actually marked a year that I got back to work from maternity leave yeah. at now at the beginning of June. Um, so that was difficult, you know. Yeah, of course, because you, you know, Especially like I get my my wife stays at home with Jack and we always talk about like, you know, this person gave birth and we're like, wow, they went back to work, you yeah. know, and it's 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 so hard to like to leave them. Yeah, it was. Uh, and it's not even the leaving them with somebody else. That's a whole different. Right. I'm lucky that I have my my in-laws who take care of her. It's just I, not being with them. It's yeah. It's literally feels like your arm is missing. Yeah. Getting back to work that first, I mean, man, the whole first year really was, was, was difficult. Um, but that first week was, it was tough. unbearable. It was, yeah. Yeah. Unbearable. I don't know if you, I don't think that you, people adjust to it. I, uh, no, you know, I think it's just about mindset, like everything else in life. Um, the way I now see it and the way I, I tell myself to see it is that, um, I try to be present in wherever I'm at, Yeah, it's big. you know, I worked really hard to get to where I was, or where I am professionally, um, and I don't take that for granted. So then I try to remember that. <laughs> but then I also acknowledge that I'm able to be present when I am with her, when I'm when I'm home. Yeah, of course. So I'm like, work, okay, I, I miss her like crazy, but I'm going to be here. And then when I get home, I'm like, by do you, work, do you think I'm your, all you. Do you now, think your schedule uh, is, helps. helps? I do think you have, like, so. The, you have like a crazy schedule. Yeah, I'm in at 4.30 uh -huh. a.m., uh -huh. and I get out at 1.00. Um, so you can pick her up from yep. work. Yeah, hey, you're here with her now. And I'm with her from like 1.30 till the time to go to till, bed. till I wake up the next morning for work. Oh wow! Yeah, so it does help, you know. Um, but it's about your. It's what you make of it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh. I think that 
uh, I hope that through this episode, people can uh, to see, you know, what it is to be uh, uh, a mom and to work. And a working mom, yeah. It's 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 hard, you know. It's it's a uh, it's it's really really difficult it's, it's not for the week yeah. <laughs> it's not for the week yeah um, and it may not even be forever either it's right you know yeah, it's just like you said you've worked so hard for it right and we're going to talk about that soon how's it working at a, uh, a news station actually let's take a step back because when uh the last time i saw you we were you know i was maybe um 10, i haven't seen you for a long time yeah 10 11 years old yeah um you know like at recess yeah and uh and then all of a sudden you are a, you know, you're working for Channel 7. How did that whole process even happen? Well, it took a lot um, to get there. Uh, rewind, I, um, nothing, I, I graduated from high school at Miami, uh, you know, born and raised here, St. Teresa, Lourdes, uh, and that's where I know you from, St. Teresa. Um, and I went to Miami Dade Honors for two years and I started interning in TV and I loved it, I fell in love. Oh, wow. With TV news. I mean, my first internship was with Sandra Peoples and Univision when I was still in high school. Wow. And I got, oh my God, I, I became... You loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved interviewing people. I loved every day with something new. You're learning something new every day. Yeah. Um, and then nothing from there. I went to college, like I said, Miami Dade Honors, and then UF. Um, and I studied it. And then every summer I had an internship at a different station, Channel 4, Channel 6. Um, when I graduated UF, I got my first job in Fort Myers um, as a reporter. So... I moved by myself to Fort Myers. I didn't know anybody there. And I was a general assignment reporter out in the field wow. with my own camera. Because you're a one-man band, typically, yeah. when you start in the field. Yeah. So you're shooting your yeah, own with video. with one person. Just you. Yeah. Just you. You are the one-man band. You are um, with the camera. You're editing your video. You're writing your scripts. You're, you're flipping the camera so yeah. you see what you look like yeah, before yeah. you like do your stand-up. That's awesome. You run into the AC, in, into the car. You blast the AC yeah, so you stop sweating so you can look like you're not dying. <laughs> yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot to it. It's a lot. In, in next episode, we actually have a reporter, uh, Lorena, from Telemundo. Okay, and, and cool. We're going we're gonna to hear that uh, that side of it because she's still out there in nice. the field. You know? so nice. I met her once at a, uh, at a, at a food drive and... Thanks. Uh, for Christmas with the uh, Miami-Dade County Police uh, uh, Public Schools, nice. and we we're doing, you know, we donated and we we're there helping the kids and stuff. And and she was there, and I said, "Wow, you know, if I ever do a podcast, you're going to come on the show." Oh, that's good. So give us some feedback. How do you think we're doing right now? Because I'm a little intimidated. Obviously, you're in front of a camera and you're talking to it every day. I have no idea what I'm doing, and uh, it's just this is something that we felt that we needed to do. I feel that uh, no construction company in Miami is doing this. I don't think there's many construction companies, honestly, in in even in the U.S. that are doing this. And I feel that what we're doing is worth so much that it's worth documenting. Mm -hmm. And I wanted people to know. Uh, but you know, this is what you do. So that we're like in your in your area. I know. No, you guys are doing great. I've seen a few episodes. Um, I've heard them. They're great. You have interesting people. Uh, you get to learn something new every time you listen to an episode, which is all about it's educating, mm -hmm. right? Uh, getting the word out. Um, the setup is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really cool. It's really you look a little different with that. Yeah, head. I'm not used to this. I'm not used to this at all. I hear my echo. I hear myself and I'm not <laughs> used to that. But this is really cool. It's something different. And that's what it's about. You yeah, know? it's all about being uncomfortable. And we're just trying to get better little yeah, by little. Yeah, uh, yeah. How has the journey been from because, you know, you just literally just explained six years of your life within like two minutes. Mm -hmm. But be going a lot of people, first of all, a lot of people have started at Mammy Dade. It's cra it's crazy the amount of people that Mammy Dade College has impacted. Huge. Maybe through um, like a class or just like, like big time. Yeah. Uh, Roby Ramos, which was on the the first episode of the podcast, he he literally took like an acting class there, and that's how he got his love for for acting. How has the, the process been? Was it like, was it a very straight path? Did you have any mentors through this whole process? Yeah, uh, great question. So um, when I was in Fort Myers, I like I told you, I was out in the field. It was a year and a half uh, doing that when I got the job at Channel 7. Mm. It's going to be 10 years now 10 that years? I've been at Channel 7. Oh, my God. I know. So I started out as a morning reporter out in the field. Okay. I was doing that for about a year and a half when an opportunity opened up inside the studio. Um, and then I've been on the anchor desk uh, since then. How was that, how was that adjustment? I missed the short field. hair, uh, I did. Alex. You know, how was, how I was I had my bob. Yeah. I had my bob for the long time. And the truth is I wanted to stand out. Um, I felt like everyone in Miami had long brown hair uh -huh. and uh, I had short hair. So I was like, oh, she's the one with the short hair. I yeah. needed to have something different in the beginning to stand out. I might, you know, is what I thought. Also, as a reporter, 
It's long hot. hair is impossible, so you need to look neat. So the secret and what students are always told is shorter hair is easier and, and, and more uh, manageable. That's... Um, but anyway, so... So so yeah that the and how do you feel about how do you feel about the, the morning news like how do you feel about a the time you have to wake up because it's you're waking up you know super early yeah but also about you know being that person like I, I we're gonna talk about that <laughs> I don't watch the news uh, so much uh, but how do you feel about being the face because like I was looking at a couple of posts uh, that you did like when you uh, you know you said you know you guys are having another baby. Yeah. And, and then I'm looking at the comments and my sister, my sister commented oh. and, and then I think like my cousin commented and I'm like, you know, they, 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 they know her, they know her, you know, they're like, congratulations, we love you, you know, and the reality is they don't, you know, they, they know you, but they don't really know you. Right. How do you feel about that? You know, I, it's a responsibility that I don't take for granted. I feel like it's, it was my calling to be in communications. Yeah. It's something that I felt from a young age. Um, so being in that seat is is a privilege and I don't take that for granted even at 4 30 in the morning there are days don't get me wrong that I'm walking in and I'm like oh I'm so tired yeah. almost every day <laughs> but um you get used to it yeah I get you I, I I am used to it it's been a long time yeah. I'm used to it um but I change like again going back to mindset I change I'm like whenever I feel like that I'm like thank you for my job thank you for my position thank you for my family thank you it's all about gratitude yeah. and it's all about your mind the mind's super powerful so um, how do I feel about it? Like I said, I feel like it's a responsibility, so I don't take that lightly. And then, yeah, people people know my life. People know. Yeah, they know everything about you. I was at Flanagan's the other day, and I was with my family, Gabe, my my daughter, my mom, my stepdad, and my daughter Charlie. Um, the waitress was like, "Oh, what's her name?" I'm like, "Oh, it's Charlie." And she goes, "Wait, Charlie? Are you on Channel 7? Oh my god! And I was like, "Yes, Get that's that. my daughter." Like, so they know her yeah. and you know while that is like maybe a little like scary sometimes because you're very vulnerable and it's not easy to be vulnerable yeah tell me about it um it's uh i don't you know i i'm thankful for it that means that they like it right that means that yeah they're, they're enjoying they're it they're enjoying it and 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 i'm thankful for that because this is home so yeah absolutely you know i was talking i was mentioning it briefly before but because it's hard to you know, what you do is hard and then you do it in the morning. It's even harder. Have a daughter, even harder. But like <laughs> some of the news is hard, you know, and I, um, I have a tough time watching the news sometimes, you know, how do you adjust with the, you know, the, the bad news? <laughs> Great question. I promise you it was just this week because some days are worse than others, but it was just this week that I was like, my gosh, like it was one tragedy after the other, after the other. And I, man, of course it affects me. Yeah. My daughter started swimming classes yesterday because of all of these drownings we've been doing. Oh. Because every time I do a story, I obviously like get affected. I don't know. I pray a lot and I'm like, God, please help me get through this because the 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 negative news is it's impactful and it's tough. and I'm human. So because just knowing you, you know, I, there's some people that I can feel that it can kind of like just roll off their back. Yeah. But knowing you as a person, I, I feel like. It doesn't. It, it, like, <laughs> it like sits on your back. Yeah. Uh, it's it's tough, you know, because it's like. Yeah. Especially now in the world we live in, it's like, uh, do, you, do you guys ever feel like you have to almost, you know, just be honest? Like this is the news that it is and we're going to give the news how it comes. Like. I mean, it's the facts. It's the facts. Yeah. I, I, I state the facts. Um, yeah. Stuff. But but it, but I I feel like I when I was out in the field and I was doing interviews with people I feel like what made me different than others out in the field is I compassion I, yeah I think you know I I, I feel you I I I care yeah. if I'm talking to you it's because I want to talk to you it's because I care I care mm -hmm. and um, and that that's not easy yeah. either because <laughs> then that comes with no it affects your relationship it affects right. your your you know your whole life what do you love the most about your job. I think it's helping people, like helping people, communicating, like those Insta updates. I do that on my own. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, I'm not forced to do that. I do that on my own. Some mornings aren't easy, but I'm like, okay, they count on it. People, I started that in Hurricane Irma. Wow. I started that when Hurricane Irma hit and it was like, oh, today's the last day to put your shutters up. Yeah, I says, remember the... Uh... Well, that remember... You did a donation to, oh, no, not Irma, but remember you Harvey. went to Texas? Yeah, I went to Texas. And that's when we, that's... The first time we, like, rekindled the... Yeah, the, when we reconnected after school all those years. Yeah. 
So we you ended uh, up taking the trip, right? Yeah. So Hurricane Harvey was coming, and I was sitting in the couch with my wife, and I told her, I go, if I if that hurricane hits Texas the way it says it's gonna hit Texas, um, I'm gonna start a GoFundMe. Yep. And I'm going to get as much money as I can, and I'm going to drive to Texas. And we're going to, you know, we're just going to go there and help. Yep. So, like, those two or three days, we were just watching the news, and it, it was like a direct hit, you know, towards. Was Galveston, Texas? And, like, Corpus, the whole area. Okay. And that, they, they had several hurricanes, I think, that that season. Or, it was tough. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There was, like, back-to-back on yep. one. So uh, I started doing a GoFundMe page. Um and we wanted to link up with Samaritan's Purse. And Samaritan's Purse, you know, through Billy Graham, uh, Franklin Graham, they talk about how they want to use the gifts that God has given them to serve others. And obviously, we, we're all about that. I have a John Bell Foundation that we're relaunching now. And our our, our motto and our mission is, is exactly, exactly the same as Samaritan's Purse, is we want to use the gifts that God has given us to serve others. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went there and I put on the GoFundMe page uh, that, you know, it tells you how, you know, you're associated with something. But I felt like, yeah, I was associated with them. So I put Samaritan's Purse. Long story short, we raised like four, three or four grand. We get over there. The trip cost us like 15 grand. <laughs> and when I went to submit, all the money went to Samaritan's Purse. And then none, none, of, it came, none of it came to me. And uh, but that trip. Nothing came to you then. Yeah, yeah. That trip really changed my life. We drove all the way over there. And we were in the middle of like complete disaster, and we uh, we didn't have a place to stay. We didn't have anything, and um, there was a, a guy that owned a gym that was also doing the same thing we were doing. And he's like, "Where are you guys from? Oh, from Miami. Um, where do you uh, you know where are you guys staying?" We're like, "No, we're sleeping in our car." He's like, "And what are you guys eating?" I'm like, "Granola bars." <laughs> and he says, "No, come in." And we stayed at his house, and we were we're there for a week. And then I remember. Like six, seven days later, I'm in a sleeping mattress in this room, and I and you text me, and you say, "Hey, Oscar, do you know that there's a hurricane coming to Miami?" And I'm like, "But we had already talked about this yeah. trip to Texas." Yeah, because Channel Seven went to my house, right, right. and they did the whole thing. So, right. So then, like six days later, you text me, "Hey, are you still over there? Because there's a hurricane coming to oh my Miami God, I now." I remember that. And I said, "No, yeah, I'm still here. I'm, you know, we're 30 hours away from Miami right now." And you're like, "Oh, I think you need to come back. Her, oh my God, there's yeah. a hurricane coming." So I look at the thing, and I told my, I told my, was par- that Irma? That was, yeah, Irma was coming. Okay. That's what prompted me to think about it. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I told my dad and an employee that we had, and I said, hey, like, we got to pack up. We're going back to Miami. And then we did the same hurricane relief here. And in those, like, 20 or so days, I realized that that's what I really, really want to do. Like, just how we can help people and serve them and bless them. Like, we saw... We were only like helping people that really needed to be helped, like people who had heart surgery, okay. single moms, like elderly. Uh, one person who had just come from Afghanistan had gotten shot, and the army had flown him because his house had gotten like, and he was gonna Gosh. go back to like it was crazy. And uh, you know, I remember, I remember that you know about, and you know you and, and you being there in front of our, our house. No, you didn't go, but you sent somebody there. So yeah, I, re- I really appreciate that. Because I was that. already in the studio, yeah, and uh, you wanted to get the word out. So I was like, oh, let me let me try to help. And 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 yeah. I remember as if it was yesterday. Yeah, it was crazy. So being able to be that communication or, or give that be being able to be a communicator during those times, mm-hmm. it fills my heart yeah, a lot. It know? makes a big difference because it you know it helps us. It helps you know. Look, I was able to tell you that there was a hurricane coming. Exactly, so I was probably you still be there. Okay. <laughs> You know, recently you uh, you went back to school yeah. and uh, and you got your master's degree. Actually, hold on, let's take a step back. Your Insta stories every day because it's I feel like it's so overlooked uh, what you do. So every talk to us about what you do and uh, it's important. So so it started during Irma um, and I took those those Instagram updates. Um, I would get on my story and I would just tell you what you needed to know for the day before you went on on the air. After. Yeah. So whenever, so that's my office. Uh-huh. People are like, "Is that your closet?" I'm like, "No, guys, <laughs> it's my it's little small. tiny office at the station." Um, but I have my dresses behind me, mm-hmm. so I guess it looks like a closet. <laughs> and um, and nothing. I started off with uh, during Hurricane Irma, like I said, like this is what you need to know today. And I saw people were really were counting on it. So the next day I started yeah, that's doing the only it again. Reason I watch it, that, that's the only news I get is your story. A lot of people story. tell me the same thing. Because um, it's quick and and like uh, it's not a lot of bad news. It, okay, so that's the <laughs> thing. The secret, when you don't see me do one... It's because it's bad. It's because there's nothing good to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I hate being... Yeah, yeah. I hate... 
The truth is, if I don't do one, it's because it's just hard. It's 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 no, you know what I mean. Yeah, yes, I get you. I just really do try to tell you what you need to know in the morning. Yeah, you know. So if you follow, uh, it's uh, if you follow Alex on Instagram, and every morning, like, pretty much when we wake up, like, you'll, you you like six. Yeah, like around six. But you know, most people wake up a little later. Yeah. And uh, when you go, you click on her story, you can get the news in about a minute. Right. And, and you do that, like, religiously and extremely consistent. I think it's... it's right. It's so a, I, I try to pick three top stories uh-huh. and your weather. And I just... Here's what you need to know as you're waking up today. Uh, there's an accident on the Palmetto. Because uh-huh. I know the Palmetto... And when it comes to traffic, obviously in the morning, yeah, people yeah. want to know it. I'll tell you that. That's one. If there's a police investigation and, like, your roads are closed uh-huh. in, in, in a certain neighborhood... And it affects them. And it affects you. That's really what my motive is. Like, hey, be, hey, look, be on the lookout. Correct. I've been awake for three hours. This I got is what's you, happened. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it all. Here's what you really this need to know. Do. Um, and and I do try to be consistent with it and the weather too. All the weather in South Florida, I it's, tell you one thing and it's going to be something yeah. else, but I'll try my best to tell you what hey, they're today's telling gonna, me. Today's going to be super hot and it might rain. <laughs> exactly. Have That's a great your day. safe bet. Yeah, That's yeah. your safe bet. But yeah, the Insta updates, um, man, it's been going on for, for years. That's a long time. For a long time. I got to do like a collection of them, like a reel of, of yeah. my short hair and you're going to see my hair, hair grow long. throughout the years. What you need to do is honestly like a podcast honestly because it's essentially like a short form type of uh, yeah. podcast um and i you would can- love to i just i gotta find the time i'm yeah. like you know time is limited these yeah, days I know. I've, uh, that's how i feel we're doing uh we usually do the podcast in the in, at night you know seven thanks o'clock. for adjusting and we have completely me. shut down the whole company today <laughs> to to the to film this but you know i it's the reality it's this is the best time to do it for you and we're here to thanks. to cater and serve for you <laughs> So you just did a master's degree. Mm-hmm. You have a kid. Yeah. You have a job. You have a career. I have all of that as well. I haven't gone to do my master's. What prompted you to go back to do a master's? So it's something I always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I picked UF because they had the opportunity to do a master's right after your bachelor's for one year. Mm-hmm. Like so, I was like, oh, I'm going to UF. I'm going to get my master. I'm going to get my bachelor's. Finish my bachelor's and get my master's. But came the end of my bachelor's, I was dying to get out into the field and report. So mm. I was like, forget it. That's how I felt. I'm going out. Yeah. And I was super excited and hungry and eager for it. Um, so nothing. I left it there on the back burner. Well, fast forward, um, COVID happens. Mm. And I didn't really like the feeling of not having a plan B. Mm. I didn't like having, because you know how, I mean, any job, any job, you don't know, you don't know what tomorrow will bring. Um, and so it was a mix of wanting to feel more secured and um, just having a plan B for my family. Yeah, prepared. Being prepared for whatever. And also it was a personal goal. Mm. So I, I told Gabe, my husband, and he, of course, was like, go for it, get yeah. it. The years are going to go by anyways. What did, what did you get the master's in? In uh, communications. Oh, wow. Actually, in public com- um, public relations, because oh. I know nothing about that. Uh-huh. So I had to pick something I didn't know. Um, but it's still mass communications. I learned a lot. I mean... What was your favorite class? The podcast class I took was super fun. Yeah? Yeah, it was super interesting. And um, What do you think you could teach uh, me about the podcast class? No, you're doing a great job. <laughs> no, please. You're doing a great job. I, for real. I wish I'd take a, a podcast class. Hey, you you look like you did take a podcast class. You guys are doing great. Yeah, for real. We have a we have a good group of people that have helped us and uh, it's like anything in life, you know. Yeah. If you apply yourself and you there's so much that you can research and, and learn. learn. And what's the, like and the reality is what's the worst that can happen? You buy the wrong mic and you buy another one, you Correct. know. We uh you know, Maria our everything in our office has like returned like $10,000 <laughs> worth of stuff. Like we use it as it works in the back. Yeah. So uh but we're just, you know, it's how we do, you know, it's how Trial we do things. Trial and just, error. Exactly. Yeah. As long as we're getting better. You know? Exactly. So in the master's degree, I, I, I was taking one class at a time. One wow. class. It took me three years. Wow. But one class at a time because I started it. No, I got engaged. Wow. Gabe proposed. I started school. I planned a wedding. Wow. We had our first baby. No, we got married. We had our first baby. Wow. And now our second baby, and I finally graduated. So this was recently, right? You just graduated like, like a month ago. a no? month ago, literally. Oh. A How month did that ago. feel? <sighs> the best feeling ever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy it's done. Yeah. But the best feeling. You look so all, emotional when oh that God. day. Well, because Charlie was there. Yeah. My daughter saw me graduate. Like what? You know, you do it for them. Yeah. You do everything for them, and I did that for her. Like yeah, I, what kept you going? A hundred percent. 
I was I was nursing her. I was recovering from a C-section doing homework. That's crazy. And I was like, I'm going to remember this day, like mental photo, you know. Well, it was admirable what you did. Thank you. Especially with, uh, you know, my wife. It's like what, everything that I saw her go through, you know, like what, the, what mothers really have to go and endure. It's like it's the I would say it's the most underrated thing on earth. The, the love and the sacrifice and the pain the like everything that women have to go through and which is honestly one of the biggest reasons why I wanted you on the show because I think it's I don't want it to just be guys you know like yeah the, the like women run this world you know at the end of the day you're quoting Beyonce <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know just I when I saw you had graduated and I saw that you your daughter was there and I saw that you were you know pregnant again <laughs> It just, I was like, oh, you know, it's, 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 it's worth documenting, you know. Yeah, thank uh, you for that. Thank you. What do you, what would you recommend for somebody that, that might be listening or might be thinking about, hey, you know, I kind of like, you know, I, I kind of like what she's doing and our, I, you know, they may have some sort of like calling for it. Yeah. Uh, what, what would you recommend for them to do? Well, first, you, you know, pick a school that has a program, uh, pick a school that has a TV program. Um, you know, FIU, their gr program is growing a lot. Mm. Uh, an old executive producer from our morning team is now directing mm. and and totally changed the TV student program at FIU, which is great because I was always getting, I would always get frustrated. Yeah, uh, it's not relative. To hear that the students at FIU aren't getting like hands-on experience and mm. now they are, so that's fantastic because uh, UF has always had that, UM has always had it. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, pick a program where you're able to get hands-on experience, pick a mentor. You asked me earlier, have I had mentors? I've had several. Sandra Peebles from Univision um, changed my life. Mm -hmm. She let me, little high school me, like go with her to different interviews and and it just takes that one person to believe in you mm -hmm. and to just let you be there with them. And experience and it. And experience it. Willard Shepard, who was at Channel 6, he retired. I was his intern. Um, and, and, and the list goes on. But those two were, were monumental for me. So pick a, pick a good program, pick a mentor, um, and, and just get out there. You know, and just do it and just do it. I know I was telling you before the show started, uh, this is uh, going to be episode 23. I think it's it is. Great. And uh, we just launched 12. Uh, so, you know, we, we pre-record, which I don't have a problem saying it. But, you know, I don't I think if I'm at a point now, I'm much better than I was, you know, in the episode that came out today. Oh, so sure. A lot of it's just repetition and getting comfortable and, and not worrying about how you sound. A lot of people say, oh, I sound so bad. And. Uh, trust me, I hate listening to myself. I bet it's awkward to go back to your first interview, your first, first oh, no, podcast. I, I, I can't do that. I bet. That's like how I feel when I look at my clips from back in the yeah. day. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. I, I listen to the, I don't, I, I do, I watch, I watch this episode twice. So when it, when it comes out, it's all edited. I'll watch it, make sure that there's nothing, you know, right. that I said that was stupid. <laughs> and, uh, and then I'll watch it again the day. And even between that time, I'm like, it, it's good. You see like, wow, like. I'm getting a lot better. Or, yeah. And then you just, you're getting better. Like, I shouldn't have said that, you know? Right. So, and then just the questions, you know, the way I have the questions, I, like, you had talked, I had asked, you know, how's motherhood been? But my next question was Gabe, you yeah. know? And I already That was knew, really your second question? Yeah, how's oh. motherhood and Gabe? But I already knew you were going to, like, go there. So it's uh, yeah. planning in your head. And so I, I, I hope that somebody gets, uh, you know, motivated. And FIU is doing an incredible job. I'm, yeah. on, I'm on the board of the industry council at FIU. Oh, good. And we're trying to do that. And uh, FIU really has uh, now, because the same thing, UF and all these schools have for a long time had had this like really heavy uh, practical knowledge of the industry in the curriculum. Yeah. And FIU, especially in construction, like, you know, like they're, they're doing an incredible yeah. job. And I'm, I'm very proud that we're doing that because when the kids graduate, we really want them to really know what they're doing. And they're not like you know, deer in the headlights. Right. And maybe not even that, but also that they understand that what the industry is that they're getting into. That's the, that's the key thing. Because imagine going four years. So one thing that we also did, and this, this episode is, it is about you, I promise, but it's just, it's just so important is that uh, we just started a scholarship and it's actually an excess credit scholarship because so many people go through FIU or just college in general and they're like, am I... I don't want to do this anymore. And if what happens, they run out of money, they get pregnant, you know? So it's meant for people and mothers like you and, you know, and people that they they change their major 
and they want to go and graduate. They just don't have cool. the That's money. That's a new scholarship? Yeah, it's a new scholarship that we just d did. And uh, we're hoping that we can help, but we, we also want to help for people to not change. I changed, right. I, I changed three times. I went from architecture to civil engineering to end up construction management. So We're still in the same, at least they're related. Yeah, but they're very different. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. All right, the next part of this is called rapid fire. You have three seconds to answer oh, these uh, questions. So right off the hip, okay, you can... Uh, you, this is the part of the show where I tell people to take a sip of wine, but, you know. Wait, wait, let me take a sip of water. Yeah, take a sip of water. It's not like <laughs> wine, but, you know, it's it's almost as good. It's my wine these days. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> what time do you wake up for work? 3.35 a.m. Morning news or evening news? Mm, morning news. Reporter or anchor? I miss reporting, but I'm an anchor now, so. Okay, so. And there's AC in the, in the studio, so, you know. It sounds like reporter. UM or Gators? <laughs> what? Gators. Most recent craving. Oh gosh, um, wait, this an airhead, a white airhead. <laughs> Don't even. Poor Gabe. McDonald's he got or, me them. Let McDonald's or Chick Fil A. Mm, Chick Fil A. Favorite childhood memory. Oh, so many, so many. But because we went to St. Teresa together, I'll say the St. Teresa Fair. I really appreciate that. What makes you tick? Uh, people who get into the elevator before people that are in the elevator get out. Oh, yeah. let, the other, let the people get out first before coming in. Well, the next one was, what's your biggest pet peeve? Well, that. Okay, there you go. And also people chewing gum and you hear the gum. That's uh, another one. That's annoying. <laughs> My wife says, I, I, like, if I go to uh, I go to bed and I'm like, I have a yogurt or a protein shake. She's like, no, no, go to the kitchen. Because can, can, she can hear you chew. Yeah, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Are you having a boy or girl? A girl. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> You didn't warn me about that. No, I, I didn't did. know that was happening. No, you did a great job. <laughs> you know, one of the things on your bio on Instagram is that you are a grantor for Make-A-Wish. Yes. How has that process been? Oh, that's my other passion. Uh, I'm happy you brought that up. So the Make-A-Wish Foundation is an organization that has been around forever mm -hmm. and ever. Uh, there's different chapters, and they grant wishes to children who have uh, uh, life-threatening medical conditions. Um, and I got involved because when I was a f in Fort Myers as a reporter, there was an anchor there that had a little girl, a wish child, shadowing her one day. And I'm like, oh, you know, what is this about? She got me into Make-A-Wish. Um, and the second I got here to Miami, I joined their chapter as a volunteer, and I'm a wish grantor. So what does that mean? I get to go to these families' homes and ask the child, what do you want to wish for? Mm -hmm. And then I bring that information back to the team who actually work for the foundation, and they make the wish possible. Wow. And then what? I get to tell the kid, hey, nope. you're, you're, this is your wish. It's being granted. Wow. What's and been I, your favorite wish? Oh, my gosh. No, um, I know that's a tough question. That is a tough question. I, I've done about 10 wishes. Mm -hmm. I wish I had time to do way more because I promise you I would do one every week. Mm -hmm. um, favorite wish? I want. How about, how about one of my – what's my most – Memorable. Yeah, memorable. Ugh, that's hard too. But anyways, what's one, your most recent wish? Oh, gosh, what was my? Oh, there was this little girl Audrey who uh, who wished to go meet Simone Biles, and she went to her training facility in Texas because wow. she's a gymnast. This wow. little girl's a gymnast, and um, and that was her. That was the most recent wish. But a mo one of the most memorable wishes I have. Um, again, one. I have several that I love so much, but is this boy named Gregory who um, had uh, some can he had a can he had cancer and his wish was to go to Hawaii and he did and he recovered. He's fine. And guess what? He's in nursing school now oh. and he's working at the same hospital that he got his cancer treatment. Incredible. And like that story is why <laughs> oh that's you why just, you do it. Yes. And you get to meet these families the, who are obviously going through the worst time imaginable. And you give them like a little bit of hope. like hope and, and, yeah. and love during that time. Yeah. I think it's so important. I thought that was so cool. I wish that, you know, uh, we can, you know, do that one day because. You uh, could sponsor a wish as a company, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Some of these wishes are expensive, but we'll. Uh, well, for $5,000, you get to be the sponsor, the official sponsor of a wish. That's cool. And you can meet the, the child and. It's, at the end of the day, it's invaluable. Yeah. I you mean. You know, like to, to see, I can't, like I can't even imagine yeah. the feeling that you know that that girl must have gotten to see you know Simon you know Simon Biles or, yeah. or or for that person to go to you know to Hawaii and I think yeah. it's I think it's really important because you know for people like you that have a little blue check mark next to their name on Instagram you guys have a big uh, responsibility and I think that you really do a, a great job of, uh, of doing that and uh, I, th I hope that you can find time to do that because it, it plays a big role in a lot of people's lives yeah so. yeah 
So are you excited for number two? I am. Yeah. I am excited for number two. Charlie has shown me a strength that I don't even recognize. Uh -huh. And so if that means I'm going to be even stronger with number two, then it's, okay. Everybody watch out. <laughs> but yeah, no, we're excited. Uh, we're excited. Well, listen, we wish you the best. I really appreciate you, you being here. Uh, we learned a lot about you. Thank you. And the things that you're about. And uh, I think there's a lot of uh, people that I think are going to be impacted uh, by this episode. And hopefully somebody can look back and they can be like that person that you were with, uh, you know, Univers, and they can look back and say, you know, maybe this episode is what... Uh, you know, uh, sparked my interest in this, and uh, and that's what this is all about. So thank you, uh, and keep on doing the Insta stories, okay? Because I the, will. If not, I'm not gonna watch the no, news. No, I got your Insta updates coming right up. And if there are any students out there who are in, interested, reach out to me on Instagram, and and I'd love to guide you and and help you along the way. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining. Uh, today was a really cool episode, and uh, that's what we want. We just want episodes where people that are from Miami, we went to school together, grew up here and have really just gone through life, through mentors, challenging themselves, going to school, applying themselves, and have been focused at um, at their goal. But, you know, sometimes life isn't so, like, uh, straight, you know, uh, but it's about getting to where you want and mm -hmm. every day moving forward, even if it takes you three years to do a one-year degree. But you did it, and that's <laughs> and that feeling that, that you had uh, with your daughter there is it's all that matters. And uh, and that's the path and the mission that we're on here at John Ball Construction, and, and I'm sure you're on that same mission as well. So... Uh, we really appreciate all the feedback, the, you know, the comments and the love. Uh, if you can subscribe, it makes a big difference. Comment, put your feedback. If you want to reach out to Alex, uh, you know, you can through the comments. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.